Hello YouTubers, how you doing? Hope you're all keeping well. Alright, so I'm here now with another video showing you another collection by another artist that I really, really love and I'm a massive mega fan of. Um, and I've also met this person as well. It's none other than Battle of Hell himself, Meatloaf. Um, I absolutely love Meatloaf uh, when I was a kid. Besides Elvis, I mean, I wouldn't really listen to anything else other than Elvis and 50s rock and roll. And then somebody then got me into different types of music. And I was in, I was basically introduced to Meatloaf. <laughs> um, I was going to say another bit of the story, but um, I, 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 I'd rather not. So here's my Meatloaf collection. I want to give... MLBF channel, check it out. YouTube channel, MLBF. It's a Meatloaf channel, and um, the stuff on there is incredible. The um, Obviously, the person who runs it is doing an amazing job, and I just want to give that person a shout out and uh just say thank you for everything that you've that you've given all the fans that you've you've uploaded for everybody to enjoy. You know, it's purely, purely amazing. And um it got me thinking earlier that well I've been doing videos now and I started doing other videos of other artists. And I thought, yeah, you know, it's it's a bit of a change, isn't it, from Elvis to to Jimmy Ellis, aka Orion, um, to all of a sudden somebody like Meatloaf. Now, Meatloaf was um and still is a uh, very big Elvis fan. In fact, Meatloaf has met Elvis. When he when he was doing the first um, part of the Rocky Horror Show, and in fact, Meat, there's an interview where Meatloaf explains how they met and everything, because Elvis went to see the Rocky Horror. Imagine that. And uh, Meatloaf is also part of an Elvis tribute show called "Love Me Tender," a tribute to the music of Elvis Presley. He sang three songs. In fact, he sang um, "Hard Headed Woman," "Jailhouse Rock." And uh, he ended the show, he ended the special with American Trilogy. And what an amazing voice, what an amazing moving performance that was. Um, sometimes when I watch that, if not all the time, when I watch I get shivers going up my spine. Um, a lot of people say that uh, he shouted on it. I just think it's emotion, it's raw energy, it's raw emotion. You know, he puts everything into, into the uh, performance. Okay, so... Let's get started, shall we? So, there's still many people who I who I just speak to. And when I did again the subject of Meatloaf, uh, some of them think that his very first album was Battle of Hell. Now, this album that I'm going to show you here, which I'm opening, the very first album really featuring Meatloaf, I'd like to think, really, because it was... Originally done in 1971, is called Stony and Meatloaf. I'm going to show you the album. And I know what you're thinking, well, hang on, there's a color difference there. That's because this is actually a, it's a, it's an original CD. It's, it was released, I believe, for a limited time. Um, and I ordered it. And it's in a cardboard sleeve. It took a while to come as well. In a cardboard sleeve, like the vinyl. Um, oh, before I go any further, those of you who used to do my videos, I've got like a different light coming on to me now because it's quite dark here because we're getting into the evening now, we are. So um, I do apologize for the light, any reflections, any glares whatsoever. All right, so I do apologize. I'm not going to repeat myself this time. <laughs> so this is Stonia Meatloaf. Uh, this is a really uh, different kind of album from his albums that you may be used to, like Battle of Hell and Bad Attitude and so forth. Um, this was on the Motown label as well. I'm going to take, uh, take the sleeve out. The ice cream van's outside. That may come up on the video. And when I take the um, inner sleeve out, you've got the information about the album. You've got the song lyrics. I'm 
This was produced by a company called Big Pink. I'll say it's original. Um, I think it's one of those what we call original press bootlegs, I think is what they call them. Um, all rights reserved made in Korea. I think it's a bootleg. But it's pressed and remastered and the sound is fantastic. It's been a while since I've seen, seen the disc of this because when I had it, I got it out once. I played the whole CD through and then I did something else and I'll come to that in a second. So there's the disc. And it's, it is pressed, it's nothing, no purpley or different colours. And it's in another sleeve. Like that. Now what I did was I got it out, as I said, played it once, all the way through from beginning to end. Just over the moon with it. And obviously these that come on here, so I always keep this... Always keep it in good condition, like like all my collection really. I, I always keep my CDs, DVDs, etc, etc in top tip condition. I never, never put anything where it's going to get damaged. And I keep it sealed because when I took it out of the, uh, the packaging, that's how it was. So, Stonia Meatloaf. But what I did, you see then... Me being me, I like everything on the, as you can see by here, everything's on the CD shelf. I love everything all in order as much as I can. So I decided to, um, now, on here, there was a couple of bonus tracks, which were Stoneheart, Who is the Leader of the People, Everything Under the Sun. Now, I believe the track listing is a little different, but all the, but the original album tracks are on here plus the other ones. So what I did was I decided to get a good scan of the cover and I decided to replicate it on CD for myself. Um, basically, I copied, done a backup copy of this so I could put this away and keep it safe and I done it in jewel case format. So here's my jewel case replica. There's the back. i done it, so if it was released on CD um, in a jewel case, how would it be done? So I, this is how I done it. <laughs> I'm trying not to get the reflection in as a matter of fact. So I do apologize. There we go. See, I did it again and I repeated myself. Only in a different way. And that's basically a replica of the, um, that's how my vinyl was. So I decided to um, do the disc design like that. Like the vinyl. And put the tracks on. So I can still listen to it on... On CD, just the back up of it. This is spine. So yeah, first album as far as I'm concerned for meatloafers, Stonia Meatloaf. How am I gonna do this? I didn't think this one through. I'll put them by the side. So if I put them that way, so it's because I've had to because they're on the, the the shelf at the bottom. You see, because I got a massive collection of different artists. Um, um, I put them on the bottom. Right, then we've got. Well, how can it not be? Meatloaf, Bad of the Hell. The this is actually the uh, the US CD release. If I'm correct. Uh, Sony Tokyo Japan recorded, manufactured record, manufactured in Japan by CBS. Okay, so this is a Japan version. Oh, manufactured in the USA. All right, okay then. So, Meatloaf, Bad of the Hell. Songs by Jim Steinman at the bottom. <laughs> There's the back. So I show you from this this angle. See, I'll try and do what I can to stop the glares and the reflections, everything. Open it up for you. And you've got the song lyrics. So 
So yeah, that's uh, better than hell. Here we go with the second album. I could go into the history of um, the albums and so forth. Um, I I think when it comes to Meatloaf, going into the history behind each album, as any big, 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 massive Meatloaf fan would know, th th there was a lot of history behind every album. And there were a lot of ups and downs. And I don't really want to go into that because I'm, I'm a fan of the music. Um, I, I love Meatloaf as a performer, as a person. And just he's just outstanding. So here we go. And I, I've had the pleasure of meeting Meatloaf as well. Um, in London, two, two, three years ago, I had a, a nice meeting with him. And I got a photograph, which I should have brought up. Um, actually, I might just do that. Kel? Any chance you could pop my meatloaf photo up for me? What? My meatloaf photo. I've just asked my wife if I can. <laughs> I know I should have got that before I done this video. So this one's Dead Ringer. This is the uh, album that came after Battle Hell, Dead Ringer. Um, that's the CD. Great album. A lot of people got different opinions about Meat Meatloaf's albums, but I, I love them all. I've got to be honest. I, I love them all. You got the song lyrics for each page. Um, I think, uh, I think this album's a great album. I think they're all great albums. This is the thing. See, people have different opinions of his albums. Cheers, buddy. My son just brought the photo up. Um, everyone has different opinions about meat, meat, uh, about meat albums, including even you know meat himself. I think he has his own opinions and everything too. Um, but I, I got to be honest, I, I love everything that's recorded. I think. I think he's just absolutely amazing. I really do. So, dead ringer. Okay, well, I'm going to show I'll show you the uh, framed photograph of myself and Meatloaf. There it is there. And um, this was in London. Um, I met Meatloaf and Steven Seagal on the same day. I, I, you know, he was, he was crazy. I absolutely loved it when, uh, when I met him. Okay, moving on to the next album. Here is Midnight at the Lost and Found. <laughs> Trying to, gone reflections. Arr! And I don't, I'm not sure if there's anything in this one. Ooh, ooh actually there is. <laughs> Again, it is, uh, yeah, song lyrics. Okay. Midnight, Lost and Found. I think I've got them in order as best I can as well. I try to because I try to make sure they're in release order. I know that like in different countries they were released certain certain times and different times. Okay, now I've actually got if I'm correct I should. Yes. I've got two of these. Now this version is um standard version that I actually had first of all. This is Hits out of hell. This is a compilation. Now, those of you who've seen my other videos will know that I'm a little bit fussy on compilations. There's, you know, I don't like too many of them with the same tracks on. There has to be something uh, specific about me having compilations. Um, now, this brings me back to my childhood. This was one of the first albums I had. The very first album that I ever actually owned myself was uh, Bad Out of Hell 2 on cassette. And this version is the version with Modern Girl on. 
Now the track listing, there's another version of this, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, after I show you a few more because of they're in release order. There's the CD. With a slight different track list on. And I'll show you show you those in a second. Aha, you open up the pictures like you right. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Advertising the three albums. There we go. And these are well, there's not song lyrics. Other titles available on compact disc, right? Okay, well, won't go into that they're better artists. <laughs> so, Meatloaf Hits of the Hell, first edition. Okay, and then we have, oh, love this album, love them all. It's hard to pick which is a favorite album or which is a favorite song. Bad Attitude. And this is the original version of Bad Attitude. It has been later re reissued by Cherry Records, who's um, again remastered the album. That's on the original Astro label. Uh, that's another thing I failed to do. I forgot to bring the Astro Records, uh, the Cherry Records CD here. Okay, and these are song lyrics. photograph and that was actually the the back cover of the original vinyl album and this album like i said was released by cherry records and because of where those albums are i will get them for you and show you them um Right, so here's the uh, Cherry Records version of Bad Attitude. So what I like about this one as well, I mean the sound, they also, as you can see, uh, remastered and released Blind Before I Stop and Live at Wembley. Now I do have Blind Before I Stop. I don't have the Cherry Records version yet of Bad Art, uh, of Live at Wembley, but I might get it to complete my collection because only three they did, and the disc design is pretty, pretty cool as well. And um, the thing about this release is they did this really well because obviously. With every album, you had singles released, and uh, you had, you know, different promos, etc., etc., released. And what I like about how they did it is the flip side. Look, they kept it just like side one, side two. So it's, that's basically the the back of of the original vinyl with everything in there. Okay, so in here they put the story, the the history behind the album, and you know. Bit of history about Meatloaf himself. I think this is brilliant. There's the, uh, ex uh, the s extended single from Nowhere Fast. That one is for piece of the action. And there's some some other clippings as well. From from it. Anybody who doesn't have the Cherry Records version of this, you're missing out. You are really missing out. Because the remastering on this version is unbelievable. Um, the only thing now, right, well, I'm going to show you the next album now, right, is Blind Before I Stop. I keep these separate from my little collection. I keep these separate because it's only like three odd ones. So that's the reason why I didn't get them in. Okay, now the next album on Astro Records was Blind Before I Stop. There's also another cover for this as well, which is um, uh, a US cover, which is like a green sort of color. So Blind Before I Stop. 
back. Another great album. I love Special Girl on you. So inside, again, you've got song lyrics. Now, Cherry Records did a release of this too, and they remastered it. And again, like the um, Bad Attitude album, the sound is incredible. My only disappointment with Cherry Records' version of this album, it's not in a jewel case. Actually, if it was in a jewel case, I would probably put it with my main Meatloaf collection. It's in one of these cardboard open-up ones. Digipack ones, as they're called. That's, for me, the only flaw. That's the uh, other version of the album cover. That's the single for Special Girl. Yeah. Rock and Missionaries. So the CDs are absolutely fantastic. Um... You know, it's the only downfall for me is how they've done the... How they've done the the cover. You know, I do like I do like it, don't get me wrong, it's a great great design. Um I don't know it's another thing to see about really how they done the live at Wembley. I don't know how they done that. But what I do like mind with the same with the booklets they done for Bad Attitude. There's the booklets, which is the front cover. And here's the back, and they've kept the back originals because here's the track list and all the information. So I do love the way they've done the booklet. And then on the inside, again, information about uh, the album, the remastering and so forth. Um, single sleeve colours. So I, I think the, the, the booklet for this is just sensational. I absolutely think it's brilliant. Again, anybody who doesn't have this, go and get it. Because the sound is incredible. So yeah, that's uh, Blind Before I Stop. Cherry Records. Remastered. So I may, I may get live at Wembley at some point. <laughs> Fair enough here it is. Fair enough. Well, it's called Live. Um, I believe this was done at Wembley. I could be completely wrong. I think it is, though. It's been ages since I actually listened to this album. We got Astra, it came out as uh, titled Meat Love Live. Excuse me, I do beg your pardon. This is a it is a brilliant concert. I'm very fussy with CDs, live albums, especially with Meat Loaf. Um, Meat Loaf in concert is phenomenal. I went to see Meatloaf the last time when he was in the UK performing, when he was doing his uh, world tour for the last at Bat Tour. And um, me and my mother-in-law's partner went to see him. And oh my goodness. I mean, mind you, when I met him, I mean, he blew me away when, when I saw him live. And then meeting him and shaking his hand um, and having a chat with him was just just overwhelming, just just completely blew me away. I mean, his performances, like I said, his live concert, just... Whew. So I'd rather watch Meat Loaf in concert, you know, than, than listen to him, you know? And that's nothing to do with anything bad or anything like that. It's just a personal... That, that's just me. Just me. And I'm like that, when, when it comes to a lot of live... A lot of concerts by different artists... So inside here, you've just got the productions and uh, the special notes and the, and the track list. That's, that's really what you got. Okay, now I'm going to show you Hits Out of Hell again, but this is a different track listing. 
Um, and I got this. This was released in Australia. This is the Australian release of Hits Out of Hell. And you see this, the track list and this is more. Just some comparisons. So the, uh, the front cover is basically the same. See the gap there on the original. Then you've got the, the CD. Not slightly different to the, the first original type thing. The track listings are different. Okay, so let me show you the inside. <gasps> oh, not good. Why oh, when the heck did that happen? Okay, it looks like then I've got to change the case on this, so I'll keep this separate. Okay, so in here, got the picture, got the albums, nothing there, and you got the uh, information about the disc. Now I'm going to read the tracks out to you. On both albums, okay? Both versions. Okay, now the first edition. You had Bad Out of Hell, Read Em and Weep, Midnight of the Lost and Found, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, Dead Ringer for Love, Modern Girl, I'm Gonna Love Her for Both of Us, You Took the Words Right Out of My Mouth, Razor's Edge, Paradise of the Dashboard Light. On the Australian release, uh, a couple of years later, you had... Battle of Hell, Read Em and Weep, Dead Ring of Love, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad, Midnight the Lost and Found, All Revved Up All Revved Up with No Place to Go, I'm Gonna Love for Both of Us, You Took the Words Right Out of My Mouth, Razor's Edge, Paradise by Dashboard Light, and Lost Love. The only C D, as far as I'm aware, original official C D with Lost Love on, which is actually a B side. So and when I heard about it actually being on on a on CD, I was like, really? And I I I I did struggle at first to find it, and then I was looking through eBay one day after I gave up, and I just saw it as a recommendation, and I wasn't even going to click on it, but I clicked on it, and it came up, and it told me the track listing, then it showed me the picture of the CD and everything. And I thought that's that's the original, so really lucky. Okay, now. Um, this is a CD that I got because I wish I was able to go and see him in his world tour when he did, I believe, the concert tour for Back to the Hell 2, Back in the Hell. And the reason why I got this is because this was performed here in South Wales, UK, and it's he done it live in Cardiff. Live in Cardiff. This is To Hell and Back. I absolutely love this album. The sound on you is incredible. And when I have it on, well, you, it'd be wrong to not have it loud, right? So, um, and this is... Um, an epic concert. It really is an epic concert. From 1994. I absolutely love this. Now I know that somebody said that there was loads of copies going around of this. But no, it's an original. Show you the um, lovely bucket with it. So, awesome photo. So, I'm making sure I get everything in. <laughs> um, I just think it's brilliant. 
even the place for it to order the uh order the cd from so i think this must have been like a limited sort of release um do you know something though right i haven't actually seen this much since i bought it i think i've seen it once afterwards um, I remember buying it before, and I again, I remember being a complete CDR, you know, when the, the cover wasn't printed on tidy paper or anything. So I, I got rid of that, and then I come across the original. And I remember it being quite expensive at the time, but I just had to have it. I thought, you know, this is just ma amazing. Um, I think I paid about you know, 25 to 30 quid for this. Brilliant album. It was live in Cardiff by the Hell 2 Tour. Then we have another one then, which is called Alive and More. Uh, my wife bought me this one for Christmas. Um, I love the medley on you. Rock and roll medley, Johnny Be Good, Slow Down, j Louse Rock and Blue Suede Shoes. Love this compilation. This is a compilation of um, mainly live tracks, but there are some studio recordings on you as well. Um... And the live recordings on yeah, you got stuff from the Bad Attitude album and the Blind Before I Stop album as well. Um, and that was on Astra too. Different sort of CD design there for Astra Records, but if I just take this out here. And there's the inside. Okay, and now we come to the first album I ever had, of my own anyway. The first album that I ever officially heard was uh, Dead Ringer. My dad had it on LP, but well, I don't think it was my dad, I think it was my, uh, um, my sister's partner at the time, I think. I'm sure it was. I know that, um, I know that, well, my sister's partner at the time got, is the one who actually got me into Meatloaf. Um, by just playing the tracks, I I I just, I just thought it was cool. But the very first album I ever had was this one here. It was on cassette, and then later on, I got it on CD. Battle of Hell Two, a nice blue cover as well. That's why, even though it's cracked, I love this case. I could change the case and see if I could put this into another case in, but I'll probably do it at some point. That's Battle of Hell Two, back into hell. Um, the amount of times this CD has been played over the years, I really have no idea. And it is still in mint. Same with the booklets. I mean, this is one of the albums that I can put on play and not skip a track. I just love it. Absolutely love it. Battle of Hell 2. And then I found this one then, which was um, an odd sort of CD. Um, a, a bit of a bit of a combination cover between Battle of the Hell 1 and Battle of the Hell 2. These are, this is called Meatloaf Mix Out of Hell. Exclusive remixes of old and new hits. So, I mean, there's no barcode or anything. Now, anyone who's seen my other videos will know that if I don't like a back cover of some kind, I'll redo it and, you know, just replace the back cover. So it's got no barcode, no copyright. So I do think this is, a again, another one of those pressed, pressed up bootlegs. It's done really well, but also a little bit sloppy-ish as well, because I could have done a lot better standing on my head. So here's, um, sorry for the bluntness, it's just the way I am. Um, I'm not rude, I'm just, just blunt, you know, I'll say it as it is. You know, I'm very opinionated when it comes to my music collection, especially. Um, I mean, don't around the CD is pressed. Um, I played it once. Um, like I said, there's, there's the front. A bit of a crazy design, mind, between the two. And there's the back. And you can see, no barcode. No copyrights, just... A picture slapped with a track list and I'm I'm just very opinionative. I mean I don't mean no harm or anything like that and I don't mean any disrespect. I mean 
but if they go into the lens to do stuff like this, then they've obviously got the know-how on how to put things. So they could have put uh, different tracks, uh, you know, like copyrights, that's the inside. See, they made the effort to do stuff like that. And okay, that's pretty basic, but again, that's an inside. So yeah, an inside can be pretty basic, you know, for or an inner shirt, as I would say. But even the spine don't even have like a, a catalog number or anything. So that's whether I'll keep this one, I don't know. I may have a listen to it again and decide whether I want to keep it. If I do want to keep it, I may take the back cover out. Um, whether I'll use this cover, I don't know. But I'll probably if I do, I'll scan it in and I'll maybe add a barcode and make up some sort of copyrights and put a catalog number on it. I, I don't know. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not going to sell them on. I mean, if I if I do sell it, I'll sell it like it is. I won't add all that on it just to sell it. I'll just check it on eBay. Okay, so here is another fantastic album. Here is Welcome to the Neighbourhood. Yes, I love this album. Again, see, I said I wouldn't repeat myself, but I can't help it. I just love these, love them all. Running for the Red Light. Oh, yeah. Awesome. I love the artwork on some of these uh, albums as well. So, got the uh, side there. Booklet. <laughs> cool color. He's like, what's up? <laughs> All right. And uh, fine. Yeah, these are uh, pretty awesome pictures. <laughs> so yeah, another great album. Welcome to the neighborhood. And I recommend all these albums. I really would. And then we have, <coughs> excuse me. I do beg your pardon for looking away. Um, here is the original first edition release of the very best of. This was pretty cool because it had tracks like uh, Home By Now No Matter What. Um, you know, the remix version of Life Is A Lemon and I Want My Money Back. You had is nothing sacred, and you had a kiss is a terrible thing to waste. Pretty cool, uh, mixed with all the other tracks. Uh, this was later reissued, and going across the back cover and the spine was a purple binder, like a purple board, uh, purple border, and the how long the tracks were were also added. The tracks was also in a different order as well; they were muggled up in a different order. But this is the, the first edition of the very best of. So I would class this as more of an original. So. Yeah, this advertises Battle of Hell, Dead Ringer, Midnight Lost and Found, Battle of Attitude, Blind Before I Stop, Battle of Hell 2. Welcome to the neighborhood, and also a picture of the front cover of this. So, we've got the inside, which um, tells you about each song. Some cool photographs as well. <laughs> this is the very best of the first edition. 
then we have couldn't have said it better yes this came out in a variation of uh, different covers different editions um one came out in a red cover i had the uh the one with a double disc you got one with a vcd on but um i no longer have that i just have the single edition the standard version now this actually has a hidden track on it uh we've got um oh which track is it i think it's forever young if you listen to forever young it says on the 10 minutes and 50 seconds that's because there are actually there's a hidden song there's a hidden little gem the only thing that uh, struck me on that track was i mean it's got a bonus track battle of the hell from storytellers now i'm not a fan of bonus tracks hate them don't like bonus tracks not really if you've seen my other videos you'll know why <laughs> But it's the there's not a version of this album out there with without any bonus tracks on. Sadly, otherwise I'd I'd get it. Um, but or, or is it released in another country? Maybe without bonus tracks. Drop a comment. Let me know if you're a Meatloaf fan and or maybe have it. Um, there's a song called Mercury uh, Mercury Blues, and when Forever Young finishes, it carries on. It continues of just silence. For a good few seconds, and I mean a good few seconds, and all of a sudden you hear Mercury Blues playing. So, um, there's nothing behind the CD, no pictures. So, there's that. Um, so, what I did, because I, it's for me, it's the last track. I don't even listen to the, the bonus track. I have, obviously, when I was when I got it for the first time, I always played it all the way through. Any new CD I buy, I always played it all the way through. Um, and these are song lyrics what I've done since I've actually edited the track and I've separated it so when Forever Young now finishes when I listen to it I stop the CD and I put it in put it in, you know, put it away and Mercury Blues I saved and I put that on a box set that I put together for myself which I'll show you when we come to it. All right. Do, 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 do. Sorry, I'm flicking through these a bit fast. <laughs> Again, another brilliant album. I'm not going to go into, like I said at the very beginning, I'm not going to go into any of the Meatloaf's personal life or anything like that because out of respect, I mean, we, we've all got personal lives and we've all got, we've all had our ups and downs. We're, we're all human and, you know, Meatloaf is just the same as us, you know, he's human. So um, throughout all the albums, there's always like different things going on and so forth, as we've probably seen in many documentaries and everything. And I'm, I'm not going to go into that. You know, let's keep it positive. Here is Battle Hell 3. The monster is loose. Yeah. Uh, songs by Jim Steinman and Desmond Child. Oh, I forgot to say as well. Most of, most of these albums have um, got songs by Jim Steinman on them. Um, I mean, Jim Steinman, what a fantastic songwriter. Um, I mean, Wow. I mean, there's no, nothing better. I wish I could find this in a, in a normal case, because these are, this one is one of the new sort of like cases they try to, try to do, as you can see there with the top and everything. So I wish that I could find this album in a normal standard jewel case. I suppose I could do it for myself, but again, I'd have to, um, oh, I can open it now. The hype sticker still on you, you see. So I don't want to take it off or ruin it. So. However, the one thing is, uh, mind you, they've made it easier for the booklets to come out. <laughs> so. Sorry, this. 
use um, the, the song lyrics, some awesome photographs inside there. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, now, as I said, I'm very particular on compilations, and there's got to be something significant for me to have. A very best of is always brilliant to have, so that was a great release. And I've got this one here. This is a piece of the action, the best of. I think the remastering work on this is fantastic. And a significant difference on here, you've got songs like I Love You So I Told You A Lie on here, which was originally done when Meat Lovers with the Ted Nugget. Or Ted Nougat. Sorry I, if I pronounced that wrong. I see these obviously, like I said, very basic. Awesome photo of Meat there. Two awesome photos. the inside Camden Dulux edition Camden, Camden Dulux Sony Music Cleveland coolio so yeah that's uh, Meat Loaf Best Of Piece of the Action or Piece of the Action The Best Of some great songs on here as well I mean um, well they're all great songs so Again, highly recommended. Then we have Hang Cool Teddy Bear. I love the song um, Like a Rose. I'm sure that one's on here. Like a Rose, Like a Rose. Yes, with, with Jack Black, I believe. All right, uh, there's the last song on you is called Elvis in Vegas. Another cool song. And um, she'll cut you like a rose. I won't sing the full lyrics because uh, of the content. <laughs> Uh, again, uh, track lyrics. <laughs> this is the album with uh, Los Angeles on. A great track. I said my head now that song. I gotta listen to that later. Right now we come to this next one. I, do you know what? The amount of times I've listened to this, I don't know. And again, I don't skip any tracks. Um, this for me, that the first time I heard the title of the um, of the album when I heard this when I heard the song. No, it's not the title of the album. When I heard the first song of this album. Um, I part me cried. It's a real, it's a message. And there's the other song, uh, Our Love and Our Souls. Um, I just, this is just an epic album. This is called Hell in a Handbasket. Again, with the original hype sticker. Um, I was so excited about this that when it first came out, it wasn't released in the UK, so I had to import it from overseas, which is um, the best thing about Amazon, because Amazon does like international shipping and stuff. So I, I didn't get it illegally. I bought it from Amazon, who ships worldwide. Well, you got Amazon.com and Amazon.co.uk, and. You know, Amazon.com, done an international shipping, so I, I bought it. Um, 
I just love this album. I love the tracks. Fantastic album. This is called Hell in a Handbasket, by the way. Sorry if I, I'm not sure if I did mention that. Hell in a Handbasket. And um, I just think it's a brilliant album. So, held in handbasket. Then we come then to the the latest release, the, the last release that came out by Meatloaf, um, reuniting with Jim Steinman. All songs by Jim Steinman. Meatloaf, braver than we are. This, again, as all the others, but again, the, the work that was done this was slightly different. It was like the, for me, is it another Battle of Hell sequel? I don't know. It's so much more than that. I mean, the way they've done the music, the way it all in, intertwines and everything, it's just breathtaking. Um, I absolutely just love it there's it was strange when i first heard the album intertwining and so forth um but I, but everything it just made sense and i don't know what it is but this is just just absolutely an incredible album and it comes with a bonus dvd behind the scenes and there was um a few songs on here that you could only um you could get, but you could—they were only available for download. So I paid for the the downloads. Um, and obviously the, the downloads. I think there was a, I think for Hank uh, there was a few albums. I think the Hank Cool Teddy Bear, uh, Hell in a Handbasket, and um, the Monster is Loose. I think there was a few albums actually. There were songs that came out as like download sing downloadable singles only. So I paid for those, downloaded them, and I put those on CD for myself. So the artwork's incredible as well. I, I just I know I know that Meet um, himself is very proud of this album as well. Fantastic album. So again, see, I'm repeating myself again. They're all fantastic. Well, apart from like the uh, that remix bootleg, I mean, I hope we got the uh, royalties for that. Hope we got his share. I suspect he don't know, but I hope he blimmin' did. He should have. You know, deserves it. I mean. This is one that I did, and now, like I say, if you've seen my other channels, uh, my other videos, not my other channels, I haven't got any other channels. If you've seen my videos, uh, you'll know that everything that I create and do, I do for myself. They're not sold or anything like that. This is um, a CD set that I put together, three CD set called Rare Gems. So I designed my own personal cover. Yes, I put a barcode on. Yes, I make them look authentic. Um, these are the the downloads only that um, came from the other these albums that you can only download, and some of them as well B sides to singles that got released, uh, which um, I was able to download, paid for, and uh, also as well like B sides of the twelve inch singles that I have that didn't get released on CD, like um, Stand By Me. Stand By Me did get released actually on CD. If I'm correct, it was a German compilation called The Collection. The only version, the only CD released with that on. I'm still yet to find that. I will at some point. 
um, but I do have it on the on a CD quality. Songs like um, um, Clap Your Hands, Hearts on Fire, um, Revelations Per Minute, which is RPM, uh, Nowhere Fast Extended Version, uh, More Than You Deserve, and um, Presence of the Lord, all the earlier tracks, both versions of Hopper 2D Bless My Soul. Uh, which the original version is called Whatever Happened to Saturday Night. Um, Writing on the Wall, all the songs he did with uh, two, uh, Ted, Ted Nougat. Um, um, stuff like uh, the Midnight of the Lost and Found remix, Fallen Angel remix from the uh, EP, uh, the EP that he did. Keep a Keep Us. Um, songs like uh, Thrashing, Car Trouble. Uh, time for the time for the heroes. Um, uh, a demo of objects in the re review mirror, which I don't know. A nine ninety four an acoustic version of objects in the review mirror. I can't remember where I got that from. Um, songs like come together, like the the tracks that were on the welcome to the neighborhood reissue, because uh, I got the standard version. Um, I had these on like the singles, the CD singles. So I put all these really on uh, Black uh, Black Betty, uh, Prize Fight Lover, Boneyard, Decanted Wish, and stuff like that. So yeah, they, that's my collection of like rare gems. So I call so I called it, and I even done a, a printout on the CD. They're all the same except the CD number. So I'm only going to show you the one disc. So. And there's 14 tracks on each disc. Okay, now we're going to move on to the DVDs. Now, I know a lot of these here I believe to be unofficial. Um, but again, I don't sell or spread around or anything like that. What I do, I, I like to have for, for just myself. I don't sell them on or make anything from them or what have you. Um, so, meet if you're watching this, buddy. I know how you... I know you feel about stuff like that, so. Okay, here is Meatloaf, Bat to the Hell, the original soul. And then we have the promo movie, uh, which I don't know, this is Dead Ringer. Um, Meatloaf Live, Wembley. Um, Bad Attitude Live. I did this with myself. I uh, done the digital transfer from the VHS to DVD, and I decided let's try and do it like the uh, like the cover. <laughs> and then on the inside, I was going to show you my VHS tapes, but they're all packed away. This is the uh, London Meltdown concept line before I stop, basically. I'm just going to say I replicated the album. Battle of Hell 2 Picture Show. And here's a, another um, DVD. When I um, done, when I bought the, the, 
I think it was, I can't remember what anniversary it was, but there was a, a three disc set. It was the, it was a live CD in it. You had the Bat of the Hell original album. Then you had the live version of the, of live, like a live concert. Then you had a DVD. Well, what I did was I had the, um, the history of Meatloaf and, um, what I did, I'd done a lot of editing. I put my own version together, basically, of both, and I, uh, I done my own version of the DVD. So this is called Back Into Hell. Um, this was, this is Welcome to the Neighborhood. Or should I say, Live in the Neighborhood. But I, again, I replicated it. I, you know, when this was broadcast on television here in Britain, uh, original TV broadcast, and I just done my own cover. <laughs> then we have Meatloaf Storytellers. The extended cut. Awesome. Uh, Meatloaf classic albums. Um, so now some of these I did, I used to buy off different websites. I was a little bit naive at the time, if I'm honest. There we go. Um, this is couldn't have said it better. Then we have Middle of Live with the Melbourne Sympathy Orchestra. And this booklet here just advertises other releases on DVD by different artists, basically. But it's a pretty cool catalogue, so I, I kept it in, yeah. And obviously, if you take the uh, catalogue out, this picture here from the tour. It's the same with outside there. You got the track list and everything. It's a double disc. Then we have this one here, which I got off eBay. This is Meatloaf, Battle of Hell, uh, live in concert. Um, pretty sort of like weird sort of DVD because there's only seven songs on yeah. Um, still pretty cool though. Ooh, excuse me. Then you have Meatloaf. Three Bats Live. Got the hype sticker. <laughs> you got the book. The book out. I believe the documentary um, In Search of Paradise was released as a separate or as its own DVD. But with the, the double disc version of this, you get you get it included. So and as it's all about the same tour and everything, I didn't worry about buying it separate. This also came with it. This is the booklet.
Okay, now there's a lot of reviews about this particular next DVD I'm going to show you. Um, again, I do have my original videotapes uh, or VHS tapes, um, but they're all packed away because we're moving so much around the house. I'll have to show my VHS collection again of of my meatloaf stuff. Maybe so. Maybe the meatloaf video. I'll do two videos on. Whatever people's opinions is. Um, I like it. I mean, I've I've been told by some people that Meatloaf liked the movie. I get told sometimes Meatloaf doesn't like the movie. I don't know. Um, and, I ne and I never asked him. <laughs> so, because when I met him, I was just so overwhelmed to meet him. So, either way, um, I found for a very long time that I couldn't find a UK VHS of this particular movie. And... Um, I waited quite some time and I bought, I spent money buying VHS from the US and um, when it came back I did digitally transferred to DVD and then all of a sudden I found a UK edition on VHS so I immediately bought it, quite expensive as well, I immediately bought it, done my own digital transfer of that so then what I decided to do, um, I decided to um, sell my US VHS tape and the DVD conversion went with it um, so they, they wasn't buying the DVD they were buying VHS and the, the DVD transfer I just thought well I don't need this version anymore it'll just go with it and then I I had the um, I done a digital transfer of the UK edition and I replicated the cover this is to hell and back As you can see, I've scanned in the um, the original video cover, and I done myself, and I replicated, and that's my disc design that I done myself. Um, hopefully, it'll be officially released on DVD one day, remastered. Like I said, so many people tell me so many different things about it and about their feelings. I'm not into you know any bit, you know political stuff or whatever. I I just enjoy what I what I enjoy, and you know if Meatloaf himself is not a fan of that i'm i do truly apologize it's just I, I i get told so many different things so anyway um i remember when this documentary was on tv and when i recorded it um i would i just wore it out completely and i wore it out and wore it out and wore it out and finally put it onto dvd this is behind the music i absolutely love behind the music I think it's one of the best documentary series that ever came out um, on any artist, not just Meatloaf, but on any artist. And as you can see there, it says both uh, versions, uh, both original and remastered versions, because in 2009, I think it was, or 2010, they done a Meatloaf uh, Beyond the Music remastered version, and it was quite different. To, well, when I say quite different, you had the same stuff, but it was edited as well. There was some stuff taken out, and it was more added on to bring it what I think was more up to date. So um, that's my that's my design there. Okay. Um. Now I do have, this is an original disc, I made, I made the cover, I bought a, a CD and DVD and the CD wasn't really in good condition, the DVD was. So I kept the DVD and I um, gave the CD away. This is the Guilty Pleasure, pleasure plus text. Um, guilty Pleasure Tour. Yeah, the spine I know I could have done better with it. There's the back. I'm trying to find like images to put together, but the uh, the DVD inside is original. Guilty pleasure tour. And then we have the the documentary then that was broadcast on um, BBC, which was called In and Out of Hell. So In and Out of Hell. So I done myself a cover of that as well when I. From 
the sky box to dvd and i put a menu and i put also featuring the unedited battle of hell official music video because i had that on tape as well so i just transferred it and then put it on it with it okay so i absolutely love meatloaf's music videos i can sit there and watch them non-stop without any issues whatsoever i absolutely love them and i had the original dvd release of hits out of hell which had only about 10 videos on there and i knew there was more i knew there was more videos out there so what i did i mean i bought um off a website i bought a um a dvd called the video collection volume one and two and the videos were just basically together from um from the dvd release and other sources and it was, it was brilliant good combination i really enjoyed it um plus over here in the uk it's um it's quite difficult to get certain um dvds and everything so i went on the website like ebay uh i offer and stuff like that but then i uh basically what i did was i put my own version together of the videos and i called it meatloaf the videos special limited edition like i say i had to make them all look authentic just for my collection they look good then they do on the shelf and stuff um surf's up uh, became available as better quality so i got that and um i like I, said, I just put this together myself um so now all the disc designs are the same so i'm just going to show you the one that's what i did um i remember putting these on a group once on facebook and i kind of got slayed because of how they looked if people thought that i was um selling them and i i wasn't and i wouldn't um they may be things I put together myself, but they are for my own personal use. They don't get spread around. Um, I enjoy it because I'm a Meatloaf fan. I love everything Meatloaf's done. I think Meatloaf is incredible. And um, this this uh, photograph when I met him, I'll, something I'll treasure. So, and... Uh, Got to thank my wife because she basically sorted me out for me to for me to go. So uh, we both went together. It was very hot. We had to wait quite a long time outside to get in. So um, really proud of this. So yeah, that's my meatloaf collection. So um, as I said on all my videos, any negative comments they'll be removed, and whoever's left the negative comments, you will be blocked. So I wouldn't waste your time. Well, you can if you want, but it doesn't bother me because I get notifications up literally should I be on my phone, so I'm just like ping, ding, ding, ding. That's it, you're gone. So it doesn't make no difference to me. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if anyone thought that, because normally on my videos I go into detail about certain things, and I didn't want to do that. Um, I respect Meatloaf as an artist, a person, and also as as a fan to him. I just you know. I know every now and then I've seen on his uh, Facebook page that he does share certain videos and everything. So I know he does watch YouTube. So meet if you do ever get to watch this, um, thank you for all the years of fantastic, amazing music that you uh, that you've given us over the years, and uh, just being you because you're amazing. And it was a pleasure to meet you about two or three years ago. All right. So as Meatloaf will always say. Never stop rocking. And I will see you all again very soon with another video on another artist. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.